high-speed rail in Taiwan. And as you can see, the post carry bag fits perfectly into the storage area. So this is for 28 inch large suitcase bags. And no problem story. So last on my last trip I actually put it this way and that fits perfectly fine as well. So I just picked up the bike from the customs area and it was in the oversized area over here. So I just opened it up to take a look, see if any, there was any damages. And so far it looks pretty good. Hi there, so this is my review of the Post Carry Bicycle Travel Case. And the version I have is the larger size, the 150 liters. And there's also a smaller option, the 135 liter that's available. And I just came back from a trip to Taiwan where it was my first time using this bag. Really good news is that the bike survived both going there and coming back. The case itself looked brand new after the first use and the bike inside there was nothing, no damage. It looked just as the way I packed it into the case. This is my first bicycle travel case and also the first time I've ever taken my bicycle on an airplane and overall it was a pretty good experience. It was a little daunting because with this smaller case uh, the fork of the bike has to be taken off in order to fit into here. But as a result, you get a case that's a lot smaller. So I had no problems putting it into the trunk of taxis and it was able to easily roll onto subway systems as well as elevators going down. So compared to other travel cases for bikes out there, one advantage of this one is that it's pretty much one of the cheapest, I think it is the cheapest one out there. So with this bike travel bag, I was cross shopping with different models and this one by far was a lot cheaper, but it definitely doesn't feel that way. Uh, it feels very well built, but for some reason the price is a lot lower than the other big companies out there that make these bike travel cases like uh, Evoc or Thule. But to me, it performs just as good as those ones, as well it can be a lot smaller. The With those Thule and other models, they're usually a lot wider because they don't need you to take off the fork, but then the overall package ends up being a lot wider and oftentimes I think it's harder to put into like a vehicle or something when you're at your destination. I was a bit worried at first because it is a soft case uh, compared to a hard shell. But one of the advantages of being a soft case is that it's a lot lighter. Uh, most airlines, they have a weight limit of 50 pounds or 23 kilograms. And anything over that, they would charge you a lot of money extra to bring the bike on board. And with my bike inside, as well as a pannier rack and some bicycle bibs and uh, shorts and clothes, the weight was about just at 23 kilograms, so just at 50 pounds, so just under the threshold where they would charge. And I think it's because my bike, it's, you know, it's not a very fancy bike, it is a bit heavier, but hope, thankfully I just managed to get under that limit, and so it was very close. I wasn't able to put in uh, both my shoes because that would put it over the limit, but I did I believe most of the weight was actually from the pannier rack. I was also able to fit a frame bag as well as a handlebar bag into the case. One of the biggest challenges of this bag is definitely that it only has two wheels in the back. Why this is challenging is because the bag itself combined with the bike, it weighs around 50 pounds. And it is quite a, sometimes a struggle when you're tired and you're traveling to be able to lift bag every time you want to move it to roll it around versus if there were four wheels two at the front two at the back you could just push it and, and pull it and it'll move but with this one every time you want to move it you need a lift to, to drag it back and forth and this lifting posture it does get a little tiring after a while because it is around 50 pounds in there now if you have a you know a really high-end bike that's a lot lighter it'll make it easier to manage the case 
But if you have a slightly heavier bag, you're going to get tired of doing this over and over again, trying to move it. Of course, one advantage of this is that when, you, when it's lying down like that, you have a big platform on top so you can put different things on it. When you say you're waiting in line to buy train tickets, you know, just let it rest, put your helmet, put if you're carrying a panty or bag on your shoulder, put it on here. That's great. Another advantage for the bag is that it is quite uh, compact when it's being stored at your house, say you're not using it. Um, it rolls completely into a small package. It is still tall, but it rolls into a, a, a much smaller package. So you can pack it away in your house and it won't take up a lot of space. This feature is also useful, say, in my case, when I checked into a hotel in Taiwan, I asked the first hotel whether they can store this bag for me while I did my bike ride. And it was nice to be able to fold it more compact so that it won't take up as much of their luggage space and they're more likely to take it in without any big issues. Because if you had a full size bag, for example, like one of those Evoc or Thule's, it would take up a lot of space and you might encounter issues with businesses able to store your bag. So in terms of how protected this bag is, so even though it's a soft case, all the panels along the sides here, they have plastic sort of honeycomb design um, that holds, that blocks any shock to the bag. On the front and the back, the basically that's where the front and the rear wheels go and that provides a little bit of protection for the bike that's in the middle. And I'll admit, at first, I was a bit nervous. First time getting on the plane, and first time arriving at the destination and opening it back up to check. But thankfully, like the case itself looks great and there were no damages. You know, I hope to use this bag in the future more often. So hopefully it's able to provide the same protection as it did for me in this trip. Now what I found with this strap or this strap is that if I'm dragging the bike behind me, oftentimes if I'm turning um, the bike sometimes, depending on how it's packed, it might flip over when you're turning. So this was quite a challenge for me when I first was using the bag because I didn't realize, oh, it's better to actually push it in front of you. So what would happen is as I'm rolling this bag around and it's behind me, I would have to be careful when I turn, the bike would flip over and fall. So the solution actually is to use this one. So put it on this 45 degrees and then just basically push it in front of you as you walk. In that case, you can control it to not fall over. on that side and instead of when I came out basically pulled it and the bag would flip over as I turn and the weight so I found a better way to carry it and lift it on uh, like this bottom handle here and support it in the other hand and basically just push so that would be the control of the bag as you, as you go around first of all and the strap on the way to carry because if you take the strap you're constantly battling the downward force and you're trying to lift it yeah it's 30 degrees here really hot so and carrying all this pannier bag and helmets not fun so up here and then you can push it it'd be really nice if this had four wheels but probably there was a design decision that it couldn't put it in four wheels here so get back to the So here we have the back of the bag and there's two zippers. So the first zipper here has an extra carrying strap so you can tuck it away. And there's a zipper compartment, hold it. I really, I don't think I even used this even once. I sort of forgot it was there. Maybe in the future, you know, I might use it. Maybe it does have a purpose to lift it. Now this bottom compartment, that holds the the two backpack straps. So I never used this when the bike was in it because it's 50 pounds and I was already wearing a backpack and I was worried that if I put the straps on and there's 50 pounds, 
I was ready the whole straps were basically ripped. And on the bottom here you see the buckle and then that connects to another buckle which also tucks away in here in a little spot. So this I think is more useful when the bag is empty and rolled up and you can basically carry this case around wearing the backpack straps. Now I actually just remember that I actually did use these ones at the start point of my bike trip. I built my bike up and I put my bike away and I took this case um, to another hotel to have them stored and I basically rolled it up and put the two backpack straps on and walked the case to the other hotel which is you know around a 20 minute walk and it was quite doable. Even when it's rolled up it's still quite a big package to be holding and sort of walking with it so having these straps is quite useful but I think if the bike is actually inside it would be far too heavy to wear on your back. So here's the side of the bag with the two wheels at the bottom and you get one strap here, a vertical strap to hold it, and one strap here on the top, a horizontal strap. And you might see these two holes here, so that's basically only used when you're rolling up the case. Um, there's two metal clips that you can use this to hold it so it keeps it in that rolled shape. So here uh, you'll see the you know, transfer case. I have the 150 liter model, and there's also a 135 liter model. Here's the two wheels. So these two are pretty critical. Without these two wheels, it'd be very hard to roll this case around. So it looks like, you know, they held up pretty well on the first trip and uh, doesn't look like any issues at all. Uh, they rolled very smoothly. And as I mentioned earlier, it'd be nice if the other side also had two wheels so that you can just push it and slide it around instead of always having to lift the bag to roll it on the wheels. So now this is the front of the bag and you'll see this flap here. So this is a quite nice feature. Uh, it's held with Velcro and basically underneath here is where you have the, the zipper and it also has a lock so you can lock it with a, a TSA lock so that if the security they want to inspect at the airport they can easily open the lock and it also keeps the case zipped up. Other than that, I do like having this flat. It makes the case look a lot neater when it's being rolled around. Now on the top here, there is a small zipper uh, with a small pouch. And basically, you can only basically store some papers in there. Like I put the manual for the case with the instructions on how to uh, put the bike together in here. But you can pretty much just leave it empty. It's not that useful up here. So after opening the flap, uh, this flap area is quite practical because instead of putting your knees on the floor as you're fiddling around with the bike, you can have this surface here which will keep your knees clean. You open up the bag here. So the zippers themselves, they feel, uh, they're YKK zippers and they feel quite smooth and heavy duty. So the bag pops open like that. And this part here on the top, that is basically for uh, one of the wheels and then the bottom is for the other wheel. So I'm gonna talk about this main compartment first before we get into the wheel compartments. So here you can see I've put in my pannier rack as well. And you can see there's a lot of bubble wrap. Um, I decided to put bubble wrap around most of the things uh, just to give it some additional protection. So I'm going to start taking the stuff out. So that's the pannier rack I had. So it ended up fitting perfectly in this spot here. I'm going to get rid of all the bubble wrap. So the bubble wrap itself, I probably say it's not required, but it doesn't hurt to always have a little bit of extra protection. So this bag of tools here, it was actually in that pouch over on the top, but I did open this bag after I came back to sort of move some stuff around. So I'll show you where that goes later. So it can fit both of my, both my handlebar bag as well as my frame bag. It's right in the back. 
case and these tools as well, they were kept in the tool compartment, so I'll show you that later. A pair of waterproof socks. And here is the, the two attachment rods for the pannier rack. And I did print out a little instructions for how to put together a bike and disassemble a bike, as well as some pictures. So just so when I'm tired from the flight, it's a quick reminder on how to you know, go through the process. So now here is the main bike. All right, so here's the bike. And on the bottom here is the compartment for the rear wheel with the cassette. The top wheel compartment is for the front wheel. So I'm gonna take, uh, show you the different additional accessories that come with the case. So there's this chainstay guard that protects the chainstay. So it's, a, it's put down here with uh, Velcro straps. So I'm gonna slide that off just so you can have a look at it. And there is basically a slide right on to the chainstay. And it's nice that it comes with all these because not all the bike cases out there come with these uh, protection pads. And then it also comes with uh, protection for most parts of the frame here. So I'm gonna take that off as well. Again, it's just how long with the Velcro straps and they feel pretty good quality, the pads themselves. Here I have the saddle and the seat post. As well as the two bottle cages. So here's that frame protection. So this is for the top tube. It also protects the front and also uh, the bottom of the bike. So Basically, the whole frame is mostly protected. So this is for the down tube. So this is for the top tube. And then it basically protects the front of your headset area. And then you also have the down tube protection. So this all you know fits very compact when you're storing it, it folds flat. So over in this compartment is where you can store all your tools. So I like keeping it in a bag in case it gets inspected. The inspector takes it out at the airport and if it's not in a bag, all the tools might fall out. So I keep all the tools in a nice zip-up bag as well as both of these uh, metal tools. So that's what this compartment's for. As well, there's only one zipper. So the Ziploc bag is basically if someone opens it, but you have a bunch of tools here. All the stuff may actually fall out if you don't have a bag to keep it in there. Now on the top here, right now it is resting against the wall, but normally if you have it flat, it would sort of be tilted, sort of slightly down facing the floor. So when you open this zipper, stuff might fall out here. So here is the wheel compartment for the front wheel. So here's the wheel here. There's uh, pocket here. This is for the discs, for the disc brakes. So they recommend you uh, taking them out off the bike just to better protect them so they don't get bent during the transport. So the two discs are in this compartment. And then over here, basically you can see there's a hard plastic piece here as well as on the bottom to protect the two sides of the wheel hub here. So I'm going to close that up and show you the bottom, the rear wheel. So now I'm just going to take the bike out of the case and all the cables are still attached so it is a, sometimes a little tricky to get them uh, positioned so that it doesn't get stuck. 
So I'm going to take the whole thing out. First take the derailleur out. There's the derailleur. So the frame just comes out right here. Handlebar and draws the fork. So this plastic bag basically used to hold those protectors, like the chain, the, the chain stay guards and the top tube, down tube guards. So you can reuse the bag to hold the fork. And basically, once you take out the fork, uh, re-screw in the top piece so that all the spacers and everything is doesn't go all loose inside the case. So I'm just going to move this frame out of the way. So there's a small pouch in there that fits the rear derailleur. And it's a double zipper. There's two zippers on either side and the derailleur basically slots into there with the cable still attached. So here is the compartment for the bottom, uh, the rear wheel. So there's also a nice diagram here in case you forget where what goes. Give you a quick memory jog of where, where to put the stuff. So here I'm gonna open up the bottom wheel compartment. So the zipper, it doesn't go completely around, but it's wide enough to basically get your stuff out. So here's the rear wheel. Again, there's these hard plastic pieces on the top and the bottom to protect it. And you also have the secondary pouch. And this is where you can put your, your chain. So uh, uh, these are screwers for the wheel. And here is the chain. So just putting it inside his block bag to keep uh, everything clean as well as your pedals, you can put them here as well. So it's very systematic where everything goes, which helps, you know, keep things organized. And here is the rear wheel. And that's basically the case right here. And now you can see those, you know, solid plastic honeycomb protectors on the four sides, as I talked about earlier. So, you know, they're sort of semi-hard and they protect the case. And at the top and bottom, you basically have the wheel protecting the bike from the top and the bottom. So I'd say probably the weak spots of this bag in terms of impacts are from the top and bottom because you only have the wheels protecting the bike while on the sides you have these solid plastic honeycomb and foam layers to protect it on all, basically all around uh, the bike. One challenge I had over in Taiwan and also now is the correct orientation of the cables relative to the fork. So what I mean is how these cables run basically relative to the fork itself. So when I was putting it together in Taiwan, I sort of messed up the orientation and the cables were rubbing behind the back of the fork. So now I'm also it's sort of like a puzzle. So I'm trying to remember how it was like from the factory and trying to thread the cable the right way relative to the fork. So it's a bit awkward because the I don't have a stand right now to hold the bike. So that's one of the challenges of having to take off the fork. So now I'm just going to roll the case back together to have it stored away. And that's one of the biggest advantages of this case is that, especially if you're living in a small place uh, like a condo or an apartment, the ability to roll it up and store it away um, is very convenient. So we're going to start by taking these uh, protective uh, walls out first. So you basically just undo the straps over here, Velcro straps. And then take it out of this slot right here. And then you do the same for the other side. Okay. 
And then once these are loose, you got that, and you can throw everything back in so you have it all ready for next time. And I won't put all my bubble wrap and tools in there just to show for this video what the case is like when you first buy it. Basically roll it up like that. So there's actually two of these straps, so one on the other side. So I'm just going to tighten them here. And then you can pull it shut, make it tight, and there you go. It's all packed away, ready to store away. Now I'll show you the tools that I brought on this trip, it's both to disassemble the bike and also to put it back together. So first one is this uh, Park Tools BBT-9. So this one's basically used for taking off the disc brake rotor. Next one is a pedal wrench. This I believe is from Bike Hand on Amazon. So this one is to take off the pedals. Next, there is this Pro Bike Tools Torque Wrench. So this one does four newton meters, five newton meters, and six, so four, five, and six. And there's extra attachments in here. So what this is for is for putting the, some of the bolts back on, like for the pannier rack and some of the other components, making sure they're at the right torque level. Next one is the Decathlon uh, Master Link Chain Remover. So this one, it can close and open the master link so to take off and put on the chain more easily. Next, there's a, brought a little bit of Loctite. So when I'm putting on the pannier rack again, sometimes it's useful to put some of this on so it doesn't, the bolts don't loosen. Next is a small pair of scissors. So these I just got from the $2 store. So they're just, it's always handy to have some scissors uh, ready to go in case you need to open any packaging or anything like that. So they fold away nicely. Next one is some spare spacers for the headset in case I lose them or when I'm building them in case they drop somewhere like into the crack of the sidewalk or something. So I'll have the spare spacers. Next is some grease. So this is for the, the pedals. Also some additional Ziploc bags. So when you're taking off screws and bolts, it's really easy to lose them. So having these is handy. Next is the Allen keys. So here I have the six millimeter, five millimeter, and I also brought the four millimeter. So I don't have it here, but those three sizes were quite handy with all the assembly and disassembly. Next, this one is a SC Icon quick release spacer. So for these ones, it's really easy to find if you have a through axle bike to find these sort of spacers. But for quick release, this was pretty much the only ones that I could find on the market. So. This is the SC Icon quick release adapter. So this is basically, you put it on your wheel. Uh, when the wheel's off, you put it on your quick release so the frame of the fork can't collapse on itself. And there's one for the front, one for the back. Next is always useful to have a Sharpie. Here I have some uh, master links for the chain. Uh, some pairs of nitrile gloves, always handy. And of course, the quick manual that I made for this uh, assembly and disassembly. So there you have it. That's the what I brought, the tools I brought with the post carry travel case. And also, can't forget extra bubble wrap. It's always handy.